70 years, the country has said an emotional goodbye to the Queen as the country enters a new era with King Charles as sovereign. Joining us now, the Culture Secretary, Michelle Donnellan, who attended the Queen's state funeral. Um, very good morning to you. It does feel morning. now with the back... Um, with the end of the period of national mourning that, of course, it's kind of back to business. But, but before we get on with the politics, firstly, what was that experience like yesterday? Oh, it was such a, a poignant service. It was uh, incredible to, to, to witness it firsthand and be a part of it and, and get to say my goodbye to, to, to somebody that served our nation day in, day out for, for 70 years. I mean, the, the, uh, that level of service and duty that she committed to is, is just, quite frankly, unbelievable. And that's why we saw the nation come out as they did from joining the queue that my department organised to putting flowers in the parks to uh, to watching the funeral on big screens. You know, people felt like they had to be part of the last few days to, to say their goodbye to one, one of the greatest monarchs we, we've ever had. Yeah. We had... There's a groundswell of support. Yesterday, of course, was a bank holiday and a groundswell of support to have an annual bank holiday in the Queen's memory. Mm. Is that something that you would support? Um, well, it wouldn't be my department that would uh, decide on that, but I'm but sure you there'll personally? be many... Well, look, I'm sure there'll be many ways that we will make sure that we remember and we celebrate the life and the service uh, of our, our late monarch. And, and the last few days have shown how the community has rallied together. Uh, and I want to pay tribute to all of the organisations that made it possible, from the police to St John's Ambulance to, uh, to, to the Red Cross and Salvation Army and Samaritans that helped us with, with the queue. It's really been a, a team effort uh, to, to mark it and commemorate and celebrate over the last few days the life of somebody who was inspirational, not yeah. just here in the UK, but across the globe. It was brilliantly organised. Everything over the last 10 days has been brilliantly organised. And your department, as you say, was in charge of organising the queue, mm. which seems to have uh, gained a capital T and a capital Q. Yes. Um, look, I want to say thank you to everybody who uh, was there you know, as everybody queued, particularly those people who clean to the facilities. Just mm. wanted to point that out, because that is not an easy job when you have mm. so many people in the queue. Do you have a final number for how many people queued up to witness the lying in state? Yeah, we're, we're crunching the numbers. We'll publish it properly in, in due course, but we think it's around about 250,000. And, of course, you know, as I outlined a moment ago, uh, people uh, were able to, to, to mourn in other ways in the capital and across the country yeah. over the last few days. But it is remarkable, those scenes that we saw of the queue uh, and just how, how well it worked is testament, I think, uh, to, to, this, uh, to this nation, but also to the respect that people felt mm. for the Queen. Uh, and once again, say thank you to all of those groups that were involved in making that possible. One of the things, as Susanna was saying, was the, sort of the, the, the setup for it. Were you and your department expecting it to be such a focus? And actually, the length of it at times, yeah. queuing for over 24 hours, I mean, to be ni nimble enough to adapt to that when it's mm. something that's so unwieldy is so really impressive. Um, uh, so we were expecting it to end up very long uh, at certain points in time. That's why we ordered so many blankets, we ordered so much water, we worked with our partners, including partners down the South Bank, to make sure that there were facilities at all times for, for individuals. I don't think we quite anticipated um, it, would, uh, it would become a thing in itself as much as it, it was, mm. um, uh, but it was you know, quintessentially British and just was uh, one of the examples we've seen over the last... Uh, 11 days of, of uh, just how people felt so compelled to uh, to show their respects, to, to say their goodbye, because, as I said, you know, mm -hmm. this is one of the greatest monarchs we, we've ever had. OK. Let's get back to politics then. Mm -hmm. um, business as usual. We have a cost-of-living crisis and people are desperate to know um, the details of what you are going to do about it. Uh, the payment of £150 to people with disabilities begins today, but we have already had complaints from people who say that um, around 300,000 disabled households are missing out on the warm home discount, which is also uh, £150. So, actually, it just cancels it out for them. What are you going to do for households where there are disabilities? 
Um, so, it, we, as you point out, we've started that rollout of the 150, but it's only one of the things that we're doing. The most vulnerable in society are getting at least 1,200 to support them. In the, in the coming um, uh, weeks, in fact, everybody, regardless of income, will get £400 off their energy bill. People have already had that council tax rebate as well. And the most important thing is, is the new news that we've announced just before um, the announcement around the Queen was the energy price guarantee. And what we're doing there is we are making sure that prices don't rise beyond what they already are. And in effect, that will save um, at least £1,000 for the average household had we not intervened on that. And that will help everybody through this period. And we've guaranteed that for, for two years. We're making another announcement on energy this week, fleshing out our support for businesses and public services. And then we've got an announcement this week in the form of a fiscal yeah. event, which will be prioritising on growing the economy. And there'll be many elements to that, which will be um, helping people through the, the issue, cost of living. The issue, of course, I mean, for, for a start, you mentioned the £400, which goes to people regardless of their income. That means that millionaires get the £400 as well as people, and the, the group we're particularly talking about today is households with disabilities, where equipment that they may be using, or the, the fact that some of those households need to have heating on all, mm. all day, they are only getting this £150 to accommodate their particular needs. So, so, the, so the payments can... for, for people, regardless of their income, it sort of doesn't... Uh, well, they gain that £400. A lot of people might say, why, why did you give the £400 to those people who can afford to pay, mm -hmm. whereas there are people with disabilities mm -hmm. whose energy costs are completely disproportionate? £150 isn't going to touch the sides. Well, I don't think it's fair to say they're only getting 150 because the majority of those people will also get um, at least 1,200 in terms of that additional support Okay, when package. I say only, I mean because they have yeah, particular I needs, yes. that means that they use a huge amount of energy because of equipment, but the targeted payment for them mm. is £150. But we have to look at this in the round because that's on top of everything else because it's the, most of them will get the, the £1,200 as well. You know, we've spoken about the 400 and in relation to your question of, you know, why is everybody getting it? Mm. You know, I was out knocking on doors in my constituency in the summer and people are really worried about this energy crisis and it's not just the most vulnerable. Everybody is going to be impacted by this. People that have mortgages, they have pre-existing debt, they have other commitments. And so I think it's right as a responsible government that we help everybody through this winter, just like we did with, with the pandemic. We didn't leave people behind. And this government won't be leaving people behind in terms of the, the cost of living yeah, crisis. But the people but we who know... can afford to pay won't be left behind. You've given well, 400 well, pounds to people who can afford to pay. My the, point was around the, the, energy the, the bills. middle. My point was more around the middle of society. But in relation to the most vulnerable, they are getting the majority of the support. They are the ones that will be getting the 1,200. They will also benefit from the energy price guarantee that we've announced as well. You know, we are acting on this with a unprecedented package to support people. And the Prime Minister has been in post, what, two weeks? And it was her first announcement. And the thing that she hit the ground running with was to try and tackle the cost of living mm. crisis. Obviously, we were delayed because of the period of national mourning, and quite rightly so. But this week, you'll see another announcement on energy. You will see an announcement in relation to the NHS and how we're going to help people with, with, with our health uh, policies. And then you'll also see okay. a fiscal event. Well, OK, uh, one last thing, because I know we're, we're very much up against time. One thing that's specific to your department, of mm. course, and it's still with the energy crisis, but to do with businesses and theatres particularly. Yeah. Uh, we had a statement from Eleanor Lloyd, who's the president of the Society of London Theatres, uh, to say that there had been a close relationship between you, your department and uh, the theatres, and that there has been the theatre tax relief has been a real benefit. I think the Lowry have said, the Lowry and Salford have said that their electricity bills have risen threefold to over a million pounds in 2022. Is the tax relief for theatres going to carry on with regards to helping them with their cost of living and their bills? Because, of course, businesses, which I know are desperate to hear what's going to happen mm -hmm. in the next six months and beyond, are, are sort of absolutely under the cosh with this. 
Yeah, so two things that in terms of our energy support for businesses, we will be doing something akin to the energy price guarantee. And we publicly said that for businesses uh, and the public sector for six months. And then we will be targeting and producing a tailored package to help uh, sectors that need it. More details will be coming out this week from the, the business secretary who will be doing a statement in the House. In relation to any tax measures and all the different things, you'll know I really can't uh, preempt that uh, fiscal event this week. It's down to the Chancellor to make those announcements, but you only have a few days uh, to wait. That will be all made clear on Friday. Okay. Michelle Donnellan, thank you very much indeed for thank joining you. us this morning.